Good morning, Minister of Education, Higher Education and Skills, Mr. Ong Yi Kang. Presiding Officer, Chairman of SUTD's Board of Trustees, Mr. Li Zi Yang. Distinguished guests, parents, and my fellow friends. I'm Wei Lin from the Architecture and Sustainable Design Pillar, and it's a great honor today to give the valedictorian speech for this graduation day. Today is a celebration of our journey for the past three and a half years. A journey where I moved from learning fundamental physics concepts to picking up a new software to trying to get enough sleep every day. When I was considering to study architecture, I read and heard a lot about the difficulties and challenges of the architectural practice and education. But oh boy, do you only know how it's really like when you're experiencing it firsthand? These few years have been a full spectrum of events and emotions. There are the good times, like the spontaneous group dinners after our desk crits, or the parties organized by our pillar committee. Then there are the difficult times, when the bi-weekly desk crits with our professors run past 11 p.m. at night, or when you have to pull an all-nighter making posters, only to find that the printer is not working. <laughs> and then there are the really difficult times. For example, coming into the Fab Lab in the morning to find that your 22-hour 3D print job has failed on you. Or maybe working weeks on your project, and then you start wondering if you made the right life choices. We've also fought laser wars, trying to book slots on the laser machines for our projects. And we used to crash the old school website. It was a real bummer trying to load a page for two hours. Although it's gotten better, much, much better now. Whew, the struggle is real. <laughs> but it is through our hardest battles that we grow the most. In these years, we've been exposed to the fundamentals of math and the sciences, learned about the histories of religions and civilizations, picked up new coding languages, as well as design thinking skills. We've created softwares, games, user interfaces, and technologically packed smart devices. We've explored ways of treating materials through robotics, as well as other digital manufacturing techniques. We've designed social spaces, community furniture, pavilions, apartments, schools, housing estates, museums, skyscrapers, villages, landscapes, and infrastructures. This diversity of issues and technologies is perhaps reflective of the world we live in today. As it grows in complexity, the definitions we once used to make sense of it are becoming challenged by technologies such as artificial intelligence, or developments such as urban villages. When SUTD was first established, it challenged the way we approach education in architectural and engineering disciplines. It's a timely reminder for us to continuously challenge our own assumptions and perceptions, because they directly influence the decisions we make, the lives we lead, and the way our societies progress. Now, as in architecture, there are few answers to life. There are few things that are absolutely right or wrong, and good or bad simply depends on the criteria that you measure against it. There are instead many questions, questions about how we should live or what we should do. It is with this understanding that we can expand our minds to start questioning things, questioning the things around us, our own perceptions, and intentions. And it is my hope that we will all continue to keep an open mind and make a conscious choice of forging our own paths through life. As architects and engineers to be, the decisions we make have potentially profound consequences on people. Winston Churchill once said, we shape our buildings and then they shape us. I'd like to paraphrase this to we shape the tools and the environment we live in, and then they shape us. Back in the days of Dover, I fondly recall the communal and almost homely living that we had in our HDB hostel. An experience which got lost in the long corridors of single and double rooms in our current campus. Decisions such as this 
can affect many people for generations. The responsibility is huge, but it is through this role of architects and engineers that our efforts have the potential to make a positive impact. Today is also the culmination of the visible and invisible efforts of many people. Our parents, who have loved, cared for and supported us through the weekends and the years since way back. Our fellow friends sitting all around us today, who began the journey with us and have been a source of joy, comfort and support. Many thanks to Kendrick, our ASD cohort rep, <laughs> as well as members of Sudio, our pillar committee, for their relentless efforts in spearheading initiatives and ensuring that the logistics of our program run smoothly for all of us. Our faculty and staff, whose immense wisdom, support and dedication have sharpened our minds and shaped our spirits. Professor Kang Shua, who on the many few trips taught us to not only look, but see the devil in the details. And not forgetting Kawi, for working extra hours many evenings every term so that we can bring our work to completion. And last but not least, the higher management and administrators, past and present, who built the school from ground up to what it is today. It is truly a remarkable feat. In the movie Cloud Atlas, the main character makes a revelation that reflects the undercurrents of the lives in the story. And I quote, our lives are not our own. From womb to tomb, we are bound to others, past and present. And with each crime and every kindness, we birth our future. As we move on into our own futures, I would like to wish for everyone a clarity of the self, courage to challenge yourself and the unknown, and a continuing effort to make the world a better world by design. Happy graduation, everyone, and thank you.